Hey everybody, Dr. O here. Welcome to part two of the Sleep and the Fasting Brain series. You've come to the right place if this is how you feel the morning after a night of fasted sleep. In part one, we talked about how fasting can impact your sleep, as well as how common sleep issues are during fasting. We also explained that it's caused by the four horsemen of the sleep apocalypse. Right? We call that these four chemicals increase your metabolic rate, energy levels, mental focus, and alertness. This is all great news until it's time to go to sleep. Alertness, arousal, energy, and focus are enemies of a good night's sleep. So now our focus is going to be on the 15 top sleep hygiene tips to calm the fasting brain. This is going to be a long video, but stick with me until the end, right? The last few tips are going to be critically important because they're the ones you do closer to bedtime. So let's roll. Our fasting brain is excited and overstimulated. We need to calm it down, right? Our fasting brain is stuck in fight or flight mode. We need to coax it into rest and relaxation mode. Our fasting brain is flooded with excitatory chemicals that want us to stay awake and eat. We need to fight back with inhibitory signals that create an environment where sleep is possible. So here's the 15 science-backed tips that I'm going to cover in this video. Right there, there are 15 of the tips that I cover in the 100 lessons in my, my course on better sleep. You might look at this link list and think, wait a minute. I was able to sleep fine without doing all of this before I started fasting. I get it but you weren't dealing with a fasting brain. The little things become huge if your brain is in the excited and hypervigilant state. We don't get to just lie down and fall asleep when we're in the fasted state. Falling asleep is a process and it takes extra work when your brain is already excited. Maybe you normally get away with caffeine until three, not when you're fasted. Maybe you can get away with a little bit of light in your bedroom or a little bit of noise in your bedroom, not when you're fasted. Right? Maybe you can normally play on your phone until right before bed, not when you are fasted. I can't sleep for you, but I want to make it as easy as possible. Right? You also know that I practice everything that I preach. Right? I take my own advice and I use everything on this list as well. I know that these 15 things can help you because of how they've helped me. And then the, the hundreds of students that I've worked with and etc. This may also seem like a lot to ask as we go through this long list of 15 things, but you may need to make some short-term sacrifices in other areas of your life to get better sleep now while your body is adapting to the fasting brain. It's just the reality. If you want to get the maximum benefit that you can from fasting, you have to be able to sleep, to sleep. And you may have to work harder to sleep while you're fasting than other people do or than you do when you're eating. All right. So let's take a closer look at this list of 15 tips. science back sleep hygiene tips, every one of them, that you can use morning, noon, and night. And that's how I have them organized, basically in chronological order. So we're going to start with better mornings for sleepier nights, right? This first section may surprise you the most. The science is clear that the choices we make during the day can have just as big of an impact on our sleep as the choices we make right before bed. We are designed to live in harmony with the sun. Right? Your brain doesn't just need to know when it's dark, it also needs to know when the sun is up as well. Simply put, our body is designed to wake up with the sun and then fall asleep somewhere around 16 hours later. That's what it means to have a circadian biology. But modern life makes it hard for your brain to have any idea what the sun is up to. This might be the first time you've seen it in a while. This makes light exposure during the day almost as important as light avoidance at night. So what does the science say about this topic, right? So light as a central modulator of circadian rhythms, sleep, and affect. So here's a quote, irregular light exposure can lead to the disruption of circadian rhythms, making it harder to fall asleep and stay awake. Sound familiar? I mean, you wouldn't be watching this video if that didn't sound like you. This brings us to tip number one. So fasting sleep tip one, take a morning walk, All right? So I recommend taking a 20 to 30 minute walk in the morning sun whenever possible. You want to send your body as many signals as you can that it's time to be awake, which will remind you that it's time to sleep later. This includes light exposure, warming up your body, and physical activity. We'll specifically talk about exercise separately in the next section. The good news is you should have time for this morning walk since you're fasting and you're not making and eating breakfast. Fasting slip, sleep tip number two, skip the sunglasses. This was a big one for me. 
don't wear sunglasses or blue light blocking glasses during the day unless you absolutely must. Right? I'm not telling you to take these glasses off if you get migraines or have other issues. But this was a huge deal for me. I have very sensitive eyes, especially when I'm wearing contacts. So I used to wear sunglasses every time I was outside. Never stepped outdoors without grabbing them. And I would wear them until it got so dark that it was actually dangerous to keep them on. So I had to take them off. It took some getting used to but it has absolutely been worth it, right? It is, I noticed an immediate change in how tired I was at night and how quickly I fell asleep when I stopped wearing sunglasses, especially in the morning. I still, I still wear them when it makes sense, right? So safety first. I wear them if I'm driving and it's bright out and all these kind of things. And if you're not gonna wear sunglasses, don't stare anywhere at or near the sun without sunglasses on. You shouldn't do that with sunglasses on. That is not necessary and it can be dangerous. When I take my walks, I look at eye level or towards the ground when I'm walking towards the sun. And then I look wherever I want when I'm walking away from the sun. If it's a really bright day, I'll still wear my sunglasses when the sun is right in my path. Then I'll take them off when I'm not facing the sun. So I want to get my I want my eyes to get the entire spectrum. I want my eyes to understand that I'm outside and the sun is up and gla and sunglasses can interfere with that, as do some of the blue light blocking glasses people wear during the day. So something to consider there as well. All right, but what if you can't get outside, right? I live in South Dakota. We don't measure the amount of snow we get in inches. We measure it in feet. So I know all about being trapped indoors for long periods during the year. This brings us to tip number three. So fasting sleep tip three, use a 10,000 lux light box. Lux is a measure of light intensity. So this is where a 10,000 lux light box can be a lifesaver. You can actually fool your brain into thinking that you are in the sun. Right, this is also a great option if you're too busy for a morning walk. I've been there, you know, raising young children, etc. You can use it in your bathroom while you're getting ready in the morning. So you're already going to be brushing your teeth and combing your hair and doing those kind of things. You can get blasted with this 10,000 lux light at the same time. You can also give yourself a second dose of 10,000 lux light in the middle of the day if you're trapped indoors for work as well. So I, so I like to do that, but I don't, uh, I never do it after three o'clock, right? The last thing you'd want to do is blast your, blast your eyes with light as you're hopefully preparing to wind down and get ready for sleep. So this is the actual light box that I use. It's called the Sun Touch Plus by Nature Bright, no affiliation. It's a combination of 10,000 lux light box plus an air purifier that releases negative ions, which is one of the things you'd be exposed to if you were outside. There are also a lot of other affordable options on Amazon. Just go there and look for 10,000 light box, light, Lux light box or Google search, whatever. But again, be careful. There's no need to stare right at the light box. Follow the instructions that the machine gives you. I just have it pointed towards me off from the side while I'm getting ready in the morning or while I'm working. But I never look right at it. All right, so better mornings for sleepier nights. Now we know what we can do this morning to help you sleep tonight. But what about the rest of the day? So let's earn our sleep in the afternoon, right? The middle of the day is all about setting the stage for a restful night later. The best way to earn your sleep in the afternoon is to empty your fuel tank, caffeine tank, and your bladder. I'll make sense of that now in the next few minutes. So fasting sleep tip number four is get exercise. Very, very important one, right? Fasting leads to a surge in energy and focus to help us find food or not become food. We covered that in part one. The more energy we use, the more signals we send to our body and our brain that we need to sleep, right? Simply put, exercise and physical activity is the best way to create a need for sleep. It helps us to earn a good night's sleep, right? Today's not a fasting day for me, but I've already taken a walk. I've already had a good squat session, right? I'll take another walk later today, time permitting, and I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. I will have earned that good night's sleep. Exercise can also increase the duration and quality of our sleep by boosting the production of serotonin in the brain. Maybe you've heard of serotonin. This is one of the reasons that exercise helps you feel good. But most people don't know this. Serotonin is, ac is actually needed to make melatonin. So it has a direct impact on our sleep as well. And then lastly, an appropriate amount of exercise, not too much, can also decrease levels of the stress hormone cortisol that we talked about in part one. But what kind of exercise is best for improving sleep in the fasted state? Studies have shown that all types of exercise, including resistance training, can help improve sleep over time. So do whichever type of exercise works best for you. Five minute walk, better than nothing. Re doing some push-ups, absolutely better than nothing. But this study here does point to a clear winner, at least in the short term, if you're, if you're dealing with insomnia. So what does the science have to say? The effects of acute physical exercise on patients with chronic primary insomnia. This trial actually compared doing nothing to moderate intense 
exercise, high intensity exercise, and resistance training. So the clear winner was the moderate intensity. So a 50 minute moderate intensity walk reduced the time to fall asleep by 55%. Total night wakefulness by 30%, decreased anxiety by 15%, and increased total sleep time by 18%. So these are massive numbers. Let me read a quote from them. Moderate intensity aerobic exercise appears to reduce pre-sleep anxiety and improve sleep in patients with chronic primary insomnia. So sign me up for some of that. This study is actually why I bumped my step count up from 10,000 steps per day to 12 to 14,000 steps per day on my fasting days. I aim for two 30-minute walks per day, right? One in the morning and then one over my lunch break since I'm not eating lunch. I also do light workouts with resistance bands on my fasting days as well. This fits with my general advice, which is to do light and moderate intensity exercise on fasting days while saving higher intensity exercise and heavy training sessions for eating days. So I'll do an entire video series soon on fasted versus fed training. One more important, important point, just do what you can. I know I just got done saying 50 minutes and I'm talking about my squat sessions, but one minute of exercise is infinitely more than zero minutes. So just do what you can. Just don't do it too late in the day or so late in the day that it's still stimulating you at bedtime. That will defeat the purpose. Light exercise, walking, and stretching are all fine at night. All right, fasting sleep tip number five. No caffeine after lunch. So now we've emptied our fuel tanks by exercising. Now it's time to flush all the caffeine out of your system and see if that's been impacting your sleep. Start with no caffeine for at least nine hours before bedtime. But some studies show that caffeine can still impact sleep for 12 to 13 hours. So keep moving your last cup of coffee earlier and earlier in the day until you get better sleep. I know this is bad news for a lot of fasters like us, right? Because we use caffeine to help control hunger during our fasts. Just trust me when I say that this is worth a try. All right, watch this video here for a detailed explanation about how and why caffeine could be a major cause of your sleep issues. If we aren't gonna be drinking coffee, what should we be drinking? So fasting sleep tip six is to hydrate with electrolytes. Make sure you're well hydrate with, hydrated with both water and electrolytes. Dehydration can lead to a lot of issues that impact sleep. Plus, low sodium levels have actually been shown to increase norepinephrine levels. Remember that norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, is one of those four major chemicals we talked about in the last video that lead to sleep issues. So check out these two videos here for more details about what it means to be hydrated with electrolytes and why it's so important, but especially important for people that are fasting. Fasting sleep tip seven, be careful what and when you drink. So I want you to be hydrated, but don't drink more fluid late in the day than your bladder can store overnight. This is especially true if you are new to fasting or low carb diets, since you will be peeing more often as it is. I just think you have to be honest about that. This is why I drink my electrolyte potion before 3 p.m. I also drink only eight ounces of fluid or less after 7 p.m. I found that if I drink any more than that, I'll be getting up in the night to use the restroom. If you do wake up to pee, and many people do, don't check the clock and don't turn on the lights. Use a red night light if you need some light to aim by. This is a huge deal. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna be stimulated by looking at the phone, seeing a bunch of light, and then trying to get back to bed. So don't look at the phone. If your alarm hasn't gone off, it's not time to wake up anyways. Have a red night light and that'll minimize the disruption and help you get back to sleep faster. All right, so if you follow the seven tips we've covered so far, you should be well on your way to a great night of sleep. But now is where the real magic starts to happen. Right now we're, now we're gonna be in the evening and, and pre-bedtime. So we need to prepare for sleep all evening. In this section, we're gonna look at the different science-backed techniques that send signals to your brain and your body that it's time to prepare for sleep. So fasting sleep to bait, this is a big one. Avoid light for at least one hour before bed, but especially blue light. Your brain looks for cues that it's time to go to sleep. Darkness is one of the big ones, right? I mean, our ancestors would have went to, went to sleep when the sun went down. So the sun going down is a signal that it should be time to prepare for sleep. This tip here is one of the top three things I've ever done to improve my sleep. And I've done everything that we're talking about here. That, that goes with exercise and cutting out caffeine in the afternoon. Those are the three big ones, but why? 
Let's look at this study here. What does the science have to say? Evening use of light emitting e-readers negatively affects sleep, circadian timing, and next morning alertness. Now this would be the same for cell phones or computer screens as well. And a light emitting e-reader is no different than those devices. So an iPad or those kind of things. So what's important here? The light emitting e-book suppressed evening levels of melatonin by an average of 55.12%. That is a huge drop. Plus, it also delayed melatonin secretion by up to three hours. This is a disaster for someone having trouble calming down their brain for sleep. So what are some tips I can give you here? So number one, turn off as many lights as you can after the sun goes down, right? Just turn off any light that isn't necessary. And this, and I know I say one hour, but this could be, we could be talking about two or three hours as well. Number two, turn down the lights that you can't turn off. And then you can also try replacing some of your light bulbs with red or orange bulbs. So if you have a, if you have a lamp that you read by in the evening, if you can put, if you can put an orange light bulb in it, it'll be better than the full spectrum lights. So turn off the lights you can, turn down the lights you can't, and then perhaps switch some of your light bulbs so they're, they're not emitting the blue light at least. What else? Keep screens as far away from your eyes as possible if you're going to use them. So this means that a TV across the room is going to have less of an impact than an iPad or a, a phone right in front of your face. If you are going to be using these devices, which I'm, not, which I'm saying you shouldn't be for the last hour, but I'm talking about even two or three hours before bed, you should turn the device brightness as low as possible. And you should block as much blue light specifically as possible. I won't go into all the details here. I've covered that in another, another video. But some of the, the things I recommend, or as you can see here, is F.Lux or Night Shift. I believe Night Shift is on Apple products. F.Lux is what I download on my PC. So when the sun goes down, it turns off the blue light. So I get less of a negative impact if I'm using my PC in the evening compared to before. And this does make a huge difference. So much so that if I really have to stay awake, and I, norm and I normally have a bedtime that I set, but if I have to stay up late, I will actually turn off F.Lux or I'm just too tired and it forces me to go to bed. So it works and it works almost too good. Uh, so you can make your light device light as warm as possible. So depending on the phone or device you're using, which again, we shouldn't be using. And then you can wear blue light blocking glasses, right? These are just like glasses with orange or amber lenses. I, got, I, I don't have them sitting here, but I have a pair that I got for about 10 bucks on Amazon. Now this may seem extreme, right? Doing all these things, but we are trying to put a supercharged fasting brain to sleep. Extreme is just what we need right now. You may even find that you need to avoid light for two to three hours on your fasting days. You just have to play with this, but at least one hour. Watch this video here if you want to see these studies and all the details in their scientific glory, right? I went into, went into much more detail about it there. All right, so fasting sleep tip nine, avoid technology before bed. Th this pairs really well with the last one. We've just learned that the light from your technology has a huge impact on your sleep, but so does the mental stimulation, right? You might think that TV and social media is how you unwind and relax, but I can promise you, your brain doesn't see it that way, right? Does blasting your brain with light and unnatural amount of stimulation in the evening, right? Really, does that sound like a good way to prepare for sleep? It isn't. So what's the science have to say though? Exposure to room light before bedtime suppresses melatonin onset and shortens melatonin duration in humans. So here's a couple direct quotes. Watching TV, playing video games, using a cell phone, and social networking can make it significantly harder for you to fall and stay asleep. Another quote. Using these devices also keeps your mind in an active and engaged state. Remember, we have a hypervigilant, active, fasting brain. We can't afford to feed it at night. So avoid technology before bed, but don't worry. The next three tips are going to keep you too busy to be using your phone or TV the last couple hours before bed anyhow. So now we're on to fasting sleep tip 10. Create a pre-sleep routine to wind down. We need to create a wind down routine that will switch our brain from fight or flight mode into rest and relaxation and sleep mode. Your brain responds to cues from the environment, right? We tell the brain if we should be awake or we should be asleep, et cetera, et cetera. Winding down before bed creates an environment where good sleep is possible. So what does this routine look like? Anything, here's the rules. Anything that calms your mind without the need for light and technology. Right, this could be reading. I'm, I'm a huge fan of reading. Um, we already said earlier, though, don't use a light emitting e-reader. And audiobooks or podcasts will be fine as long as you're not staring at the screen, right? You're just listening. Puzzles. Puzzles are a good idea for some people. This shows you how individual it is, though. This is the best way for my wife to prepare for sleep. Uh, terrible for me. I get frustrated. I'm not, I'm not very good at them. So reading, puzzles, card games, board games, talking, you know, cuddling with a significant other. 
or you could try some of the more advanced relaxation strategies in the next tip. So fasting sleep tip 11, use relaxation techniques before bed. We need our brain to go from this to this, right? These re relaxation techniques can speed up that process. Things like Yoda, yoga, I almost said Yoda, yoga, meditation, and mindfulness are tools to calm the mind and relax the body. Let's look at some simple things to try. So let's start with relaxation technique. Let's start with journaling. Mindfulness may help you maintain focus on the present and worry less while falling asleep. So one study actually showed that using a worry journal to write things down decreased how long it took to fall asleep by 50%. I always like to say, put it this way, put your worries on the page, let the journal worry about it for the night so you can, you can go and get some rest. Uh, but then you can do the opposite, right? Gratitude journaling is also powerful. So journaling is great. Next one is guided meditation. You can do regular meditation too, if that's your thing, but I struggle with meditation because I'm easily distracted, right? So I have found that guided meditation tools help me and, and my family. So there's meditation apps like Calm, Headspace and Reverie. Then there's also NSDR, which is non-sleep, deep rest, and Yoga Nidre are powerful guided meditation tools as well. So here you can see on YouTube, you, I, I've, I've used all three of these and like them. You can just search for non-sleep, deep rest, Yoga Nidre, and these kind of videos will pop up. Just don't look at the screen. Next, we have breathing exercises. So perhaps you're a little bit overwhelmed by the idea of adding yoga and meditation to your nightly routine. So start with something as simple as breathing. We're all gonna do it anyways, may as well do it the right way. There are lots of different ways to breathe, but the keys are to use slow, controlled breathing, and then to breathe through your diaphragm and your belly. So I always like to say that when you're breathing, if you put a hand on your chest and a hand on your belly, the belly hand should be moving two or three times more than your chest hand. That means that you're doing slow diaphragmatic um, belly breathing. The next key tip is to always focus on the exhale. That's where the relaxation occurs. When you're exhaling, that's very parasympathetic. Remember that rest and relaxation response. So you can look on YouTube for some videos to get you started. Again, I've used these. I just search for guided breathing exercises for sleep, and these are some of them that will pop up. All right, I saved the best for last, my favorite, progressive muscle relaxation. Right, so progressive muscle relaxation is based on the theory that physical relaxation can promote mental relaxation. Another way that progressive muscle relaxation may help improve your sleep is by taking your mind away from intrusive thoughts that are going through your mind and making it hard for you to fall asleep. By focusing on your muscles, you can calm and slow those racing thoughts that tend to overwhelm you at night before sleep. So how do you do it? Again, that's something that takes practice, but the simple idea behind progressive muscle relaxation is to tense and contract your muscles and then relax them. The key with this technique is to tense each muscle group, whichever one you're focusing on, while taking a deep breath in and holding for about five to 10 seconds. Then you slowly exhale as you let your muscles fully relax for 10 to 20 seconds before you move on to the next muscle group. So here you can, again, you can search for uh, progressive muscle relaxation on YouTube for full tutorials. I've watched both of these. I like them both. That's why I put them on the screen. All right, so fasting sleep tip 12, take a warm bath. So we always talk about the relationship between light and sleep and looking at the sun here, but we often forget that temperature influences sleep just about as much as light does. Uh, recall that we live in sync with the sun. Right? The sun doesn't just light our planet, it warms it as well. So a drop in core temperature is one of the key signals to your body and your brain that the sun has gone away and it's now time for sleep. So what can we do to speed this process along? That's where taking a warm bath or shower or a foot soak, if that's all you wanna do, helps speed up the body's temperature changes. As your body cools down afterwards, this can send a signal to your brain to go to sleep. Right, so a warm bath before bed can increase deep sleep by 15 to 20%, according to sleep expert, Dr. Matthew Walker. So what's the science have to say though? Before bedtime, passive body heating by warm shower or bath to improve sleep, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So this literature review found that taking a hot bath or shower before bed could improve sleep efficiency and sleep quality. So obviously we know what it means to get a good night's sleep, but what's sleep efficiency? That refers to the amount of time you spend asleep in bed as opposed to lying awake. So people who took baths or showers measuring between 104 and 108.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 40 to 42.5 degrees Celsius, 
one to two hours before bedtime, experience positive results. You don't want to do it too close to bedtime because you need your body to cool after that warm bath. They reported improvements in their sleep, even if their baths or showers lasted for as little as 10 minutes. Let's kick it up a notch though and turn your bath time into a sleep ritual. So consider adding Epsom salts, aromatherapy, guided meditation, or breathing exercises to take your warm bath to the next level. Just don't fall asleep in the tub. All right, now it's time for bed. We need to build a better bedtime. So what can you do to create an, an, an ideal sleep environment that allows you to fall asleep faster, wake up less often during the night, and get you the sleep of your dreams? Well, that's what these last few tips are going to be about. So fasting sleep tip number 13, go to bed at the same time every day. Don't sleep on this one, pun intended. Researchers won the Nobel Prize in 2017 for figuring out that your entire body runs on 24-hour cycles, not just your eyes and your brain. Our bodies love routines and regularity. So going to sleep and waking up at regular times trains your body to know when it's time to sleep. After a while, you get into a rhythm whereby you naturally fall asleep and then even naturally wake up rested. That's the real payoff. So what's the science have to say though? Circadian rhythms, sleep de de deprivation, sorry, and human performance. Quote, once your body adjusts to this schedule, it'll be easier to fall asleep and wake up around the same time every day. Again, when you're not, when you're not fasting, maybe, you'd, maybe you could get away with staying up later on the weekends, et cetera, et cetera. But this routine is going to be one of the major things that helps you while your brain adapts to fasting. Fasting sleep tip number 14, one of the most important ones by far. Create the bedroom of your dreams, right? Your bedroom is much more than four walls with a bed in it, right? It isn't a bedroom. It's not a room with a bed sitting in it. It's your sleep sanctuary where you focus on maximizing sleep quality, right? A sanctuary is defined as a place of refuge or safety. It's where we create an environment that supports your sleep biology. So how do we do that? Sleep sanctuary tip one, keep your bedroom dark. Right, we've already talked about avoiding light before bed. It's even more important to avoid light while you're sleeping. So why did I put why did I put this tape on here? Well, I am very sensitive to light, but especially when I'm fasting. So much so that in my home, I, I have used, it's electrical tape, not this kind of tape, but I've used electrical tape. I covered the light that's on my air purifier. I cover the light that's on our smoke alarm. Uh, I bring tape with me and we'll do the same thing in hotels. Like my, my bedroom is so dark that I have to feel my way to the door. And that's what a bedroom should look like if you're struggling to sleep. If you do need a light in your room, put a red bulb in it. You can buy night lights that have red bulbs. At least that way you're not being exposed to the blue light, which is the most stimulating. Keep your bedroom cool. So set your thermostat to a temperature between 60 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15.6 to 19.4 degrees Celsius. These are the numbers that the science say are ideal. But 65 degrees or cooler is actually ideal for most people. So I understand fasting can make a lot of people feel really cold. So this may sound like a bad idea, but here's the good news. It's okay if you get bundled up warm in your bed, as long as the room around you is cold. You will naturally cover or uncover yourself while you sleep, even without knowing it, if you get too hot or too cold. This is what I do. My bedroom is cold, but I have a nice big blanket then I poke my arms and legs out of it if I start to warm up. And most of the time I'm not even aware of it. So, so our bedroom needs to be dark and needs to be cool. Next, keep your bedroom quiet. Now, this can mean different things to different people. Block the sound that you can. Use white noise to cover what you can't. Right? So white noise machines can cancel out disruptive sounds. So my wife, she likes, she likes it quiet. She uses ear pl earplugs. But white noise works way better for me. Here's how, here, if I block 99% of noise, that last 1% just drives me bonkers. So white noise to cover up those distracting sounds works way better for me. So I use a fan and a HEPA air, air filter as my sources of white noise. They serve double duty then by helping keep my room cool and my air clean. So that's a win, win, win. All right, so that's how you create that sleep sanctuary that, that, that allows you to have a good night's sleep. So the last sleep tip here, fasting sleep tip 15, is one maybe you haven't heard of, but to use a weighted blanket. Right, this is last, but certainly not least. I think this is very promising. There's a lot of emerging science about the use of weighted blankets to improve your sleep. Weighted blankets can help calm a restless body and an anxious mind. They use what's called deep pressure stimulation. This type of pressure has been shown to relax the nervous system. It models the experience of being held or hugged 
Or something like we use something similar when there's fireworks with our dog, for example. What's the science have to say though? A randomized controlled study of weighted chain blankets for insomnia in psychiatric disorders. This was a four week trial. Uh, use of the weighted blanket resulted in significantly better sleep maintenance, higher daytime activity levels, and reduced daytime symptoms of fatigue, depression, and anxiety. Right? Who wouldn't want some of that? And there were no serious adverse events occurred. So let me read a quote. Weighted chain blankets are an effective and safe intervention for insomnia in patients with major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, so disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So obviously not looking at the fasting brain uh, in particular, but still very promising. Next study, the effectiveness of weighted blankets on sleep and everyday activities, a retrospective follow-up study of children and adults with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and or autism spectrum disorder. So let me read from the conclusion here. Weighted blankets showed positive impact on falling asleep, sleeping the whole night, and relaxing during the day, which is exactly what we're looking for here. All right, so here's a general rule. Weighted blankets should be five to 10% of your body weight to be effective. Right, just, uh, but then make sure you get one that is cooling as well. Right? We don't want to trade one problem for another by making you too hot to sleep by adding a weighted blanket. Talk to your doctor if you have conditions that could be made worse by a weighted blanket. It's always best to talk to your doctor anyhow. These include claustrophobia, obstructive sleep apnea, and other breathing issues. So better safe than sorry. Always my model. All right, so here's the 15 things that we've covered in this video. Right, I've given you a long list of things to try. How many should you try? The honest answer is try as many as you can until you get the sleep that you need. And then will you have to do these things forever? Probably not. I talked about that, how most people start to adapt and, and, and fasting sleep issues go away pretty quickly. But you may stick with it just because of how well you're sleeping. And you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then keep in mind that your brain loves routines. So all of these tips will work best if you do them every day and not just on your fasting days. All right, I do have an entire six hour course on sleep. If you need more help than this video can provide, right? Over 500 students have taken the course now and it's the highest rated sleep course on Udemy because it works. I poured my heart and soul into it. So some of these fifths, so now we're back to, we're at the end here getting ready for, for part three next. Some of these 15 tips are easy. Some take a significant investment in time or money. Understand that. I can't promise you it'll be easy, but I hope and pray that it will be worth it for you. If this list does seem too daunting for you, just do what you can. But part three may be where you wanna focus your efforts, right? Taking a few sleep enhancing supplements is easier than restructuring your life. So I will see you there. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.